Move the DPW budget, Excellent. the adjusted budget from Christie's handout. You might want to know OBS 17. That's the page. No, we're not going to use the handout. Well, I'm well, using it. I'm using it. The, I'm using it, and the number that I'm going to put is for our recommendation is five million one hundred and sixty-seven thousand nine hundred and eighty-four dollars. The reason I'm using that figure is that it reflects. The change in gasoline and diesel. I'll second it. Seconded by Regina Barnes. Chris, you might as well come up before you fall asleep there. We don't want to get you all we don't want to get you all bored. So you went right to the bottom, huh? Right. Well, you might as well. It's one hole. I'm missing a page. A rent. Ladies coming? <laughs> we said Chris, yeah. so we were thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Five million one one eighty nine. Hold it. Okay. Oh, seventy two, something like that. Five million one sixty seven nine eighty four. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. I have my notes on the old version. That's right. Yeah. Buy a so I'm trying to buy it. All. <laughs> she can't. She can't vote. <laughs> Wow, well, they, she takes the notes. They keep you up yeah. late plowing, did they? No. No. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So far, so good? You don't want to be plowing. Okay. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions to start off? Thank Otherwise, you. we'll let Mr. Jacobs have a little chat. Go ahead, Brian. Um, right Street. What's what? that? Was this an emergency, or is this something that was... Yeah, there was a uh, discovered... Monday. Uh, thought it was a pothole. Come to find out, it's a sinkhole. Uh, we'd inspected the, that particular pipe twice in the last year, uh, mainly due to the head wall damage that was done at Brad Street. Uh, Visual inspection inside showed no defects, but structurally from the outside it was insufficient and it just collapsed. Now, will that come out of this year's budget or? Oh, we're into 17. Okay. But I mean, we had the piece of pipe, mm -hmm. so what That's came true. out of the budget is gasoline, uh, yeah. you know, some it's gravel. Down. We already had the processed gravel, so, okay. and the paving when okay. it warms up enough. Good, it just made me nervous. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Pierce? Uh, did you have an opportunity to look at the transport question I had for you about the transport station? I can't hear you, Michael. The transport station? I. Jennifer had all the questions down. Was that one that you remember? The difference between using one person and two people? And the, well, no, there used to be a part-time part person working part -time. at the transfer station. And right. you, you haven't replaced him, and you've got three uh, people working overtime now. The, you, the union, the Teamsters <laughs> Union contract specifies that the, the manager of the uh, transfer station, it's a Teamster position. Um, well, I hand you the, the, the copy of the union's contract, and that's not what it says around the first page. It specifically eliminates that from being the consideration from the union contract. Right on the front page of the union contract. I gave you the copy of that whole mess last, last time you were here. I've, I've read that uh, equally as well as you have, and I guess I would have to disagree respectfully. What's the I don't understand how you can come to that conclusion, but that it's a negotiated contract. I have no authority to override that contract. And it says very specifically in the contract that it's not a union position. And, we, and didn't we ask which I was contract on the board you were printing from? We I was on the board Mark Richardson's that. position as manager of the transfer station is a Teamster position. Yeah. And on the weekends, it is a Teamster position. And the Teamsters have elected to fill that position. They had reached previously agreement with the former director that could they use a part-time person three out of four right, weekends, in the and they acquiesced to that. When he left, they no longer acquiesced to that provision. It was in the contract from 14 to 16, so the contract would still be in place when you've changed it. Is my problem. I mean, then, it's going to end up costing the town a few, a few few thousand dollars when you could have a person doing that for uh, part-time. And you're going to be paying people not without a union grievance. And we were already doing that way. You did. We are not doing that currently. We have not been doing it for almost 18 months that way. 
well, why are you just now putting in overtime and reducing the part-time wages then if you've already been doing it for 18 months? Because by the time we actually get down to negotiating the contract and or preparing this budget, that's when it, we got caught up to it. So you, you haven't, been, if you, if this is in your new contract that the voters haven't approved yet, you mean? No. Because the one that had what I said was still in effect in 2016. And I just said I respectfully disagree with you. I believe your interpretation of the contract to be wrong. If you think I'm wrong, please take it up with the town manager. End of discussion. Okay. I'm sure. Okay, wait one second. Further questions on this side? Okay. Tim? Welcome back. Yes, good to be back. Have you said that with a straight face, too. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't go by without discussing federal storm water requirements, right? Right. As you recall, last we discussed, I asked, well, you know, you guys have some clue what, you, what we need to, to, to test for public, public health, right? And right. you said you'd get back to me. Uh, and so I assume you've done that, that work up. And so how much money do you need to do that? So, I prepared a memo knowing that on November 29, 2016, you asked this question. And basically, uh, I put together this saying that uh, due to the natural resources located in Hampton, we have been designated a small municipal stormwater system community. This is the MS4, uh, MS4 permit that you generally hear about and that we are still awaiting the new um, permit. It is in the interest of the town, whether required by a new permit the existing permit or no permit at all uh, to ensure that our natural resources are protected and to be able to continue to support the commercial and recreational activities that depend on them. We have implemented and are required to implement stormwater requirements for our developers and our own activities, i.e. the DPW's activities and any other town departments throughout town. In order to accomplish this, funding is necessary to develop best management practices for the town and to ensure that they are followed throughout and after the construction processes. As part of these practices and as one example, the DPW needs to identify all of our stormwater outfalls and understand if the outfalls contain pollutants such as oils, grease, and bacteria in order to identify the problems the outfalls may have if they do have them and then any remediation that may be required. This process has been started and we currently have identified our outfalls have mapped them using GIS and have ordered the signs for the placement. So that is stuff that we have talked about in the past and money that we have spent. To expand on these efforts, funding is necessary to continue with pollution testing at outfalls, development of the stormwater pollution plans that are required, and to cover outreach efforts that are needed to involve the public in protecting the town's resources. The funding requested will also help to cover the construction associated with stormwater quality improvements, ongoing maintenance, and the replacement of the current town BMPs. Uh, when you hear the word BMPs, it stands for best management practices. If you want to relate that to activities that the department does, uh, that's your repair of uh, drainage structures, outfalls, the rock that you see at the end of it with the weeds, the pruning, the trimming of any of the wooded vegetation around any of the detention or retention areas that's not supposed to be there because it can affect the berm and therefore have troubles. Um, the replacement of oil absorbing materials, i.e. making sure we are stocked uh, if there are any type of oil spills. And then I finished the sentence off as well as the continued efforts to follow up on pollution identification, uh, detection and elimination. That's something that we work uh, with the wastewater system as goes to the fats, the oils, the grease that Chris has talked about. When that winds up in our drainage, that's our stormwater problem. When people are putting poop down our drains from their dogs, that's a stormwater problem. These are man hours, these are efforts, these are vacuuming. These are equipment that we need to vacuum. Um, the list is all associated. Within the limited staff of the Public Works Department and the increasing demands of our services, <coughs> it may be necessary to subcontract some of the work that will need to be accomplished. Funding for the department would allow us to continue with stormwater management practices and expand on them to include construction site runoff control. This is a requirement. And that would include resident engineering services. That's uh, an example of, say, the bicentennial wall project, for example, 
We have hired consultants, i.e. engineers down there, monitoring that construction. Chris and I can't be down there and do our jobs all at the same time. That takes dollars. Post-construction runoff control. This is the construction of new BMPs, so new swales, new riprap, new detention areas, new uh, water quality outlets, new recharge areas, new rain gardens. Um, also, the inspection of these systems. Every year, by December, every facility that has been permitted through the planning department has to write an operation and maintenance plan. Their engineer presents us a report. We spend the time to read their report, the things that we don't agree with their reports. We go out and we make comments. So that's time again. Uh, sometimes in the past we've used our stormwater consultant to do that work, some of the subcontractors. The actual repairing of the riprap, the swales, the detention, the retention, that is our own staff. Toby has been out on Help Me With The Street Muncie? Muncie Drive. Muncie Drive, uh, working on those last two detention basins in the last two years. Uh, the illicit discharge detection elimination. This is the testing of the outfalls to answer your question. Um, this is lab equipment, which we did use some of the funding last year and have another purchase coming up uh, to test for these oils, the facts, the bacteria. Uh, the bacteria is also similar to the bacteria that we were testing for when we had the sewer force main breach. Again, uh, as much as sewers and drains are different, you don't want them colliding, so we do test for fecal in our drains, not just our stormwater. Uh, the pollution mitigation, again, this is about consultants' um, lab equipment analysis. Uh, at one point, I did do up um, testing the fecal twice a week just for the force main break. Averages out to be almost $250 between the equipment, the time, the materials, the lab costs, and you do that every year, you know, times the 12. So these are all numbers that got put together. One of the major components of the new permit, and I'm doing this fairly fast because we have a lot to cover, um, the public education outreach. Not only is it something that we've tried, you've seen the thing on Channel 22, we've done it through the selectmen, we've done it here. There are flyers in our office, don't flush things down the toilet, but don't put things down our storm drains. Again, we're talking the drainage. Part of the new permit is you actually have to measure how many people you're reaching out to. Um, it's going to be more survey oriented, it's more outreach materials. Uh, there are now professionals currently every single day sending us emails about their marketing that they can help do within our town. Uh, so this is funding to get help with um, meetings that where we bring in advocates and professionals, those that can sit here and demonstrate and do presentations, as well as putting together the mailings, postings, and flyers. Uh, public participation involvement follows that right hand behind. That's how you're going to measure the progress. Again. New permit doesn't mean we can't be doing it now. All the stuff that we do now helps us in the future. Um, that's workshops, surveys, um, and training sessions for anybody who wants to know how to do the rain gardens. There's Soak Up New Hampshire, I know the Conservation Commission does it, but this all falls in the MS4 and through the MS4 permit and that line, which I believe is adequately named just um, Federal Stormwater Requirements. We currently have a permit. That's a reminder. We have requirements we currently have to follow. Uh, and then there's always the pollution prevention and the good housekeeping. This is all about erosion control and setting up um, policies and procedures for how we prevent the pollution through our operations and those in towns. So it's a summary of what we're doing, what we need to do, and what we need to expand upon. And that's what the money is being used for. And if you ask Jennifer well, a question, like you, you get a response. DPW activity, I suppose, just the one line I'm asking for. No, most of that was all for the stormwater regulations. We have a drainage repair line, so that's when something breaks. We yeah, need we'll to fix it. have an analysis line as well. And that's for our wastewater uh, sewer plant, which we're required under our sewer firm. And again, we're talking drainage. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. That. It sounds like you were covering a whole lot. No, nope. I kept trying to go back that the MS4 is for drainage. Again, I'll say it again. The MS4 is for drainage. There's a lot of crossover. Will you actually be sewer. testing for the first time in 2017? Will we be doing testing? Yeah. We've been doing water. testing now. We're currently doing the testing. I understand the only for bacteria. I did preparation work last year. Since we've no, had the no. since February since the sewer break of last February, we've agreed as part of our stipulation with DDS. To, to test for fecal matter right. and in, in the my open question, water. My prior meeting, meeting and it's still today, what else do you need to test for for good public health relative to 
instead of just fecal, but is there not other stuff that you need to test as well? It's fecal, it's pollutants. Those are all the things Will that Will you be testing for those? Oil. Oil. That's really all I wanted to know. And that 15, is... Uh, 50,000 is just the right number to do that? And to put together pollution if, prevention if, plans. If it's, if it's not, I'll have to take it from other budgets. Right. Or that's, that's so you're saying it might be low, but it's definitely not high. Correct. Okay, thank, thank you. you for that. Very, very Sorry. simple questions. Uh, let me Sorry. one further up here. Uh, remember that song from the 50s, Mr. Sandman? Uh, that was a very nice song. Uh, what a nice song. Anyway, our Sandman isn't here, as you know. Jerry's annoyed. And I have to pay homage to him whenever sand is an opportunity here. We had sand being discussed. Uh, You're going to sing it? Here in winter <laughs> I probably could Tim, actually. Give, Tim, give a reference. Where are you on? I have a sore throat, Bob. So sorry. Uh, are you on OBS sixteen? <laughs> Salt and winter sand. Yeah. Is that where we are? Yeah. Okay, it's just so people can look at there. Okay, what's the problem with sand? Well, we keep funding it and we don't buy it. So. Well, you don't know. There again, it, it's a what? Thirteen thousand dollar line. Yeah. A five million dollar budget. Um, yes, uh, due to last year's mild winter um, and the winter before, if you put sand on that much snow that fell, you'd just well been wasting it. Um, very prudently, we haven't bought any sand because well the co cupboard is full. Do I, in the grand scheme of things, for thirteen thousand dollars? Cut it if you feel that you must, but I'll still buy sand. Question: uh, well, If last, I need it, last time I need we discussed it. it. He, wouldn't, he had no intention of buying sand. But I, you know, Unless he needs a number of times over the last five or six times we've met, we've always referred back to that beautiful crystal ball. I don't have that crystal ball. Okay, I, I don't know that crystal ball. No, and. Yes, I, I have enough sand, I believe, to make it through this winter. But if I run where I need more sand, if, if every third day is a nice storm and I go through all the sand that I have, yeah. I will be buying sand. Good. Go ahead. Mr. John, go ahead, Steve. I, <coughs> you asked a question I about asked sand. I asked a question right? about the sand when you... She actually knows more about that. Okay. Okay. When, before the meeting started, that's what I was talking to yeah. about. Every year, the Hampton Beach Village District buys 300 tons of sand for a sand sculpture event. Now, my understanding is from Greg Grady, the person that we uh, have, uh, who's a, right. that runs the uh, thing for us. Can we hear you? Are you near the microphone? Because I've well, I hope they can hear me. The public's got to be able to hear you. I'm sure they can. Um, the so the the thing that I want to know is that Greg has told us. My understanding is that when we take the sand off the beach, and that sand has to be removed because it's different from beach sand, right. my understanding is that we donate it to the town of Hampton. And that's why I was asking you about it, but you weren't aware of it. No. Are any of you aware of that? Mm -hmm. I, never I wonder where the sand's going. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. It's being removed from the beach, and my understanding yes. was that it's being donated to the town. No, no it's being disposed of. Yeah. It's contaminated. Yeah. It's right, well, I've just learned something. Thank okay. you. I do know one thing, though. I'm sorry. The, the sand that we buy is very coarse, very rough. The beach sand, sand sculpture sand, what is saying, is very uniform. It's fine. Clay. Very fine. Clay. Yeah, it's very, very fine. If I were to use it on my roads, and, and Mike's probably got more experience with this, it would probably make the road slicker <laughs> it wouldn't really give us traction so it isn't a product that i would readily use i i i kind of like putting baby powder down <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay i stand corrected but having done it for years i know they dispose of it because it's because of the glue and everything else it's yeah. also contaminated and it has such a dramatic Different consistency that I think I would have noticed it in our sand pile. Our sand pile is very, very coarse. He doesn't let anybody sneak into the sand pile. Is it still true you don't plan on buying sand next year? I I have enough sand in my cupboard. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
minimal amount. No, it's a matter of being accurate in this case. I don't ask about uh, the tax rate effect on any line items. I do warrant articles. Okay. And what I'm interested in is having a budget. This is as accurate as we can get it. Now, this number, $13,877, I mean, as far as I can remember, I've been here four years, I see that same number every year. Right. I mean, so that raises a flag. So how can that be the right number every year? And how can the actuals always be zero? I mean, I think, I think it was even zero a couple of years ago when we had those huge storms. One of the reasons why you'll never see the number go lower is there's a fear amongst those of us that prepare a budget is that it'll never come back up at all. In reality. What do you mean it'll never come back up? Okay, we have about beaten that. What do you mean it'll never come back up? Default. That, yeah, if we go to a default budget or something like oh, that. Oh, okay, so this, uh, is, this is a means of keeping the default budget up. No, okay. no, it. I didn't say that. Oh. It's a means of having a fair representative number in the budget for something that would be, uh, it's a risk aversion amount. But you mentioned the default budget. Okay. Uh, I was to mention yeah. behind me, and that's, I, I picked it up. Okay. Right. So the default budget is in play. Case in point. Mr. Kravitz is moving the question. Yes, thank you. In, uh, oh, we have a new rule, do we? Well, well enough, you know. I mean, we're the on the middle a of sentence ask, answering my question, he's, Madam Chair. And, and, and you create a rule that says anyone who has a question. Planning. Well, a gentleman is answering the question. Yes. I yes. got it. He, he, has, rule. he has second. Described. <laughs> I move the question. <laughs> Will you stop no, it? I think that's okay. I think we're pretty comfortable ready to vote on salt. Sure. Well, mm -hmm. do you really need to vote? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you want the whole. You, you get it really good. If he moves the question, then that takes precedence over everything else, in my voice. Right. Okay, so, okay, so you're moving the question on the total budget. Yeah. I just, I have a quick, quick question, under, and I'm, we're not going to go into this forever on the um, waste. And waste collection. Is there any hope in your life for cutting back on the waste that's crippling you? You mean you know, solid waste? Yes, sir. Richard. No, it's an it's an inherent like would have part of being. Uh, I'm answering your question with respect to the tonnage. Yeah. Towns grow. Uh, yeah. Hampton is a very vibrant community. Yep. Uh, twenty percent growth rate, or sixteen, eighteen percent growth rate in the not only the uh, capital amount of the town, i.e., buildings and, and things of that nature, but then also uh, uh, sixteen percent or twenty percent growth rate, depending on which number you look at, in, in the actual taxable value of the town and right. the properties that you all enjoy. So obviously, this is a desirable community. More people will come. I don't ever see the waste load decreasing, right? Unless the so society, in its practices, dictates yeah. a change. It's just a dreadful burden on your department, Mike. I'd like to pop on that. Are you doing anything to promote recycling in town like we used to do? Well, for instance, yes. For instance, in the in the um, my annual report that's just been submitted, I've asked everybody in every community, could you all just put recycle one more pound? Per day per week, that would equate to tons of uh, savings because we pay right now. We're only one of two communities in the state that pays zero per ton to dispose of recycling. <coughs> Nashua and ourselves, we are lucky. We have four more years of this recycling at nothing per ton. Now I still have to pay. $300 a truckload to transport it somewhere, yeah. but at least I'm not like other communities paying $75 and $85 a ton to yeah. dispose of recyclables. Yeah. So it's in the taxpayers' hands. Right. Recycle more, save yourself some money. Uh, how, do, how do you get this out to Mary Lee, can I just oh. ask a question? Yes. If you had to move the question yes. and it's been seconded, you can't keep talking until you vote on moving the question. <laughs> No, I'm she sorry. gets to make up rules at I'm her sorry. will. Or you can change the rules, I guess. We can have the rules any way we want them. That's well, I, I guess so. Okay. Okay. Are we going to vote? Who seconded? You seconded? Who knows? Stop. You seconded, Mr. Kravitz? Yes, I did. Yes. Oh, you, Mr. Ladd seconded. Ladd did. 20 okay. minutes ago. Mr. Kravitz <laughs> did move to move the question on the entire operating budget. 
All right. In favor of going ahead with that. Okay. The entire operating budget of what amount? A public uh, works, five million. Oh, okay. Just the public works. Yes. Not yes. the entire budget. Okay. No. Although that works. Works. budget. Yeah. Next. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, Mike? Putting <clears throat> four. Okay. And what are you doing, Mr. Jones? I'm abstaining. Okay, Mr. Jones is abstaining. Thank you. I was in the bathroom, remember? I didn't Get follow back. you. Okay, now you have to vote on the bottom line. Yeah, you voted on the move, but now we to move. Vote okay, on. so now we're going to record the main motion for five million one hundred sixty-seven thousand nine hundred eighty-four dollars. I'll second. Mr. Henderson seconded. You understand the intent of the motion? Yes. Yeah. Grand total on public in works. In favor, grand total on public works. Regina, are you alive down there? Good. Okay. Uh, unanimous. Mr. Jones? No, I will go along. I love DPW so much that, I mean, okay. even though I have some issues that weren't allowed to be addressed fully. Madam I can't resist but to say yay. I can't resist but to say yay on DPW's budget. Okay.